coming up on Ag Week TV. The United States Supreme Court makes a big decision affecting pork producers that do business in California. We kick off our Follow a Farmer series for the season with a unique operation in South Dakota. The child care crunch crisis continues to surge in rural communities. And a North Dakota ag engineering business gets quite the award, all while meeting the president. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Emily Beal. The U.S. Supreme Court is siding with the state of California to uphold a statewide ban on selling pork that was raised in tight spaces, like gestation crates. In this week's Ag Week cover story, we take a look at how Proposition 12 will impact producers across the country. By July 1st, pork farmers will have to make serious changes if they plan to market their hogs in California. Producers here will have to, uh, have to comply uh, it's a little unknown how those regulations are going to be uh, implemented um, as far as on the farm. These new regulations don't necessarily benefit the pigs either. I think it was maybe not understood by the public that the gestation stall actually helped protect the sow. Yes, they don't have the freedom of movement to turn around and they don't have as much space, but they're a social animal with a social hierarchy and uh, they they sometimes can be hard on each other, so they can fight, and, and that results in injury. Implementing these practices is going to be expensive. If you look at the uh, footprint of a sow farm today, for example, you're either going to have to add square footage to comply with the 24 square feet requirement, um, or you're going to have less animals on that site. And it's a cost that is going to be reflected at the meat counter. It's disappointing for pig farmers, but I think uh, let us not also forget the impact that it has on consumers because, uh, you know, the ones that are going to really be impacted at the end of the day is going to be California consumers. And in, in an environment in which California consumers are already already dealing with some of the highest food prices in the country, this decision will just compound that impact. But the increased regulations could create a premium for producers looking to sell pork in California. Congestation is, it doesn't really cause a loss of productivity, it just increases the cost. And so if there's a premium there that California can, consumers can pay, I think there, there would be some producers very interested in changing. But despite the changes, pork producers look toward the future. You know, pig farmers are resilient and they're going to figure out how to, to move forward and and continue to provide great animal care to the animals uh, that they're responsible for, while also uh, ensuring that they can, you know, provide a, a wholesome, affordable product for consumers in, in California and elsewhere. Proposition 12 also impacts the confinement of egg-laying hens in veal calves. You can read much more in the next Ag Week magazine or at agweek.com. Finding childcare is a big challenge for many parents, especially in small towns and rural areas. But one Northwest Minnesota community is putting a lot of resources into a new affordable daycare center. Availability of affordable daycare is, is huge. It's, it's really the, the basic step for growing a community. They say it takes a village to raise a child, and while Warren, Minnesota isn't exactly a village, the town is raising money to help ease the child care shortage that's costing the community young families. Getting awareness out there of how bad the child care issue is and how it does affect every community member, not just young parents. Lindsay Bugler is on the board of the Little Sprouts Learning Center. When her kids were at the center eight years ago, it ran into financial trouble and was closing. She and others came up with a plan to run it as a nonprofit with help from the community. I've been fighting the good fight ever since, just trying to keep it open and um, help run day-to-day -day operations. Working with other community members, um, we, everyone kind of had, they were like, okay, we can keep this thing going. But that wasn't enough. The growing town needs a bigger facility. When community leaders learned about the daycare shortage, they developed a plan to build more affordable child care, just like they had stepped up earlier for their school, hospital, and assisted living facility. 
So I think that's why our school is growing and that's why the community is growing. And in order to maintain or even increase that growth, you have to have daycare. The city is building a $2.6 million center. It's financed with grants, loans, donations, and a local sales tax. City Administrator Shannon Mortensen says Warren may be the first city in the nation to use a local sales tax for daycare. The lack of debt will keep costs down for parents and allow the center to pay workers higher wages than daycares in neighboring towns. Mortensen says it's an important part of the city's growth. Yeah, they're excited. It's a lot of change at one time. You know, when you have the expansion of the school and daycare starting and you've got newer people moving into your community. Um, yes, and very, op very optimistic. The new center will have room for 110 kids, more than double the size of the old one. It's expected to open in March. Up next on Ag Week TV, we'll meet a North Dakota farming couple that's not sheepish about marketing their lambs. There's no easy button, no guarantees, or promises of a good year. This is farming. It's unpredictable and demanding with long days and sometimes stressful nights. It's weathering the storms and coming out successful. Farming isn't for everyone. We thank those who make it their life because it is for everyone. Since the inception of Vatterstadt, the spirit of innovation has led the company. We push the limits, providing innovative and reliable seating and tillage solutions that simplify everyday life for farmers. We continue to reimagine the capabilities and technology behind farm machinery, providing customers with a perfect emergence while maximizing their yields. We look forward to growing together. North Dakota is a leader in ag commodities like corn and soybeans. When farmers and animal ag work together, we can keep more dollars in North Dakota. Well, the opportunities for North Dakota on the animal ag side is really to add value to our grains that we're shipping out of this state. We do purchase crops from our neighbors instead of uh, the crops like soybeans and corn and wheat being shipped out of state. They're able to be used within the state, reducing some of those costs to ship those products and increasing the value to farmers within the state. From adding value to crops to natural fertilizer, it's clear that there are win-win opportunities for animal ag and the crop industry. Diversification on our farm is, is huge to make it profitable for the next generation and generations after that. I partner with Animal Ag. There's not a dollar amount that we put on it. Let's keep North Dakota crops at home. Support growing North Dakota agriculture. Visit AnimalAgND.com to learn more. Dynaflow is the ultimate high volume water management pump. Whether you're experiencing flooding, emptying sloughs, transferring ponds, or working on irrigation, the Dynaflow pump works in as little as 18 inches of water and is designed to move 3,000 gallons per minute. The Dynaflow lift pump is the perfect upgrade to your drain tile system. Using line shaft turbine pump technology, these pumps are made to last while operating efficiently. Dynaflow drain tile pumps can move up to 1,500 gallons per minute, up to 3,400 feet away. Our Ag Week special report this month takes a deep dive into meat processing. The business is expanding for one local processor in western South Dakota, thanks to a $3.3 million USDA grant. Over the past couple years, Wall Meats has noticed an increase in demand for local meat processing. Prior to COVID, we were processing about 500 animals, about 300 beef, 200 hogs. Um, during and after COVID, we are up over 700, almost 800. So we have almost doubled our capacity for this little location. Only having a 2,400 square foot food processing facility in Wall in a retail location in Rapid City, they are excited to expand by building a larger processing facility in New Underwood. That should have a capacity of 4,000 head per year. It helps take care of of the ranchers and producers in the local area as well as some of them are a little further out um, and it also allows us to take care of individual customers that rely on on our product. They will also get better processing equipment. The amount of product that can come out of that or be pushed out of certain equipment like that definitely, are, uh, definitely enhances our capabilities um, for mass production. 
With many partnerships in the community, the company is also making sure people know exactly where their meat comes from. We're one of the, the few that I know of, or not the only one, that we put the rancher's name right on the package, or on the public. Working hard to ensure more local protein is accessible to consumers. That grant um, is going to allow us to expand and to be able to help more people. Um, uh, again, my goal is to, uh, to try to make sure that we can support more people and what they're trying to do um, while streamlining our, our process as well. While Meads is hoping to break ground on the new facility within the next couple of months and plans to open within 18 months. Lambing in the re region can be seen as a niche market to some, with not very many places to market your sheep. I visited Stro Farms in Nor Tappan, North Dakota, where they overcame that obstacle. To me right now, for us in the sheep industry, the biggest thing is just marketing. Brent and his wife Barb Stro raise sheep and cattle on their operation outside of Tappan, North Dakota. They also grow small grains and corn. They lamb out around 750 ewes a year. With that many lambs hitting the ground, the Strohs needed a place to market their stock. So they began working with a marketer in Wisconsin. Years ago, we started doing it. There's just not a lot of places to market the lambs and stuff like that, finished lambs. So we started working with this company probably back in the 80s. They pulled together a sizable amount of lambs from different places in the region. The lambs are finished out around 140 to 150 pounds. We pool lambs here, so we'll probably market anywhere from three to 4,000 lambs here a year. Cattle dominate North Dakota, so oftentimes the Strohs go to Wyoming or South Dakota to get more heads for their herd. It's hard to find numbers, so you gotta go west to get numbers. And then I'll just kind of spend my time doing the stuff with the sheep. A lot easier for me to handle. Barb Stroh enjoys working with their sheep herd and getting to make connections with other sheep producers who drop their stock off at the Strohs for marketing. You get a pretty good group. I, I like it because you just, it's, they're all living that same thing that you are. They understand everything that you're going through, whether it's good or bad. Um, fun group of people. It's just, I don't know, it's kind of like a little sheep family, I guess. <laughs> the Strohs send about 350 lambs per load every two to three weeks throughout the year. Ahead on Ag Week TV, we'll take you to a farm that will soon be blooming fields of flowers. Risk management is not just for the grains. Livestock producers, did you know you too can protect the price for your production? Livestock Risk Protection, or LRP for short, is a great tool to help you protect the price of your calves. Cattle producers can also protect their pasture and hayland from lack of rainfall with Pasture Rangeland Forage, or PRF insurance. This is a very affordable way to help producers in times of below average rainfall. Call the Risk Management Specialist, Martinson Ag Risk Management. You can get the field results you want in varying conditions with the flexibility of the Summers VRT Renegade. Featuring on-the-fly blade angle adjustment from 0 to 19 degrees. And if you want the simplicity of a Super Coulter with the ability to move a little dirt, you'll love the all-new Summers Super Coulter Samurai. Go to SummersMFG.com or visit your local dealer to learn more about North America's broadest line of tillage equipment and other products from North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing. Getting down to business on the farm means hitting the office early, making sure your team's ready to go, getting updates from the field, and talking with your management team. At Brimmer Bank, we understand the business of farming and how to protect and grow your operation so you can be sure your present and your future are in good hands. The Cray Revolution Ditcher is the new standard for surface water management. The Revolution Ditcher leaves a smooth finished 5 foot flat bottom cut and cuts up to 10 inches in one pass. Throw dirt in either direction, up to 165 feet. Now with the hydraulic cross are going to break up dirt and keep you working faster. Check out the Revolution Ditcher at Cray.com. 
Bray Advantage is a full-line, full-service dealer with everything you need for fertilizer and chemical applications, like electronics from Microtrack and Raven, pumps by Banjo and John Blue, a full line of poly parts, tanks, and spray tips. We support the equipment we sell with factory-trained service technicians and a well-stocked parts department. It's our commitment to offer you quality products at competitive prices with the best financing options available. Spray Advantage, proudly serving North Dakota and Minnesota. Ag Week weather is sponsored by Bremer Bank. Connect with a banker today at bremer.com. Will the weather cooperate long enough for farmers to plant their acres? Here's John with our AgriWeather Outlook. As uh, the calendar turns toward June, most people would say we're getting to the point where you can pretty much call it summer. Realistically, many areas, Northern Plains, Great Lakes, it's still kind of a spring weather pattern most years. But this year, it's actually looking like a more summertime weather pattern. Generally speaking, over the United States, we're seeing mostly warmer than average weather where it's cooler, a little further north, and generally pretty seasonably warm weather across the south. And overall, I'm not seeing a lot of really well-organized heavy precipitation, at least over the next two weeks as we segue into the June months. Of course, the showers and thunderstorms take over from the general rain systems when you get into warmer weather. And everything really depends on the jet stream. Uh, with the jet stream generally remaining along the U.S.-Canadian border this week, we're going to keep most of the U.S. pretty warm. Snow's melting pretty rapidly in the Rockies. Most of the really cool air is limited to the higher elevations. Florida, Texas, and the desert southwest, the Mojave Desert, are the areas that are notably hot this week with a lot of weather in the 90s. Most of the United States here will be in the 70s and 80s, just fairly comfortable spring weather, and it looks like it's going to stay that way. The jet will meander a bit. There's a little branch of the polar jet stream coming around and keeping kind of encircling the Hudson Bay region and keeping some pretty cool weather up in that territory but we're seeing this is really the last little vestige of what had been a giant wedge of cold air dominating the Great Lakes and the Northern Plains throughout so much of February March and April so that pattern is still there it's just retreated with the Sun and we're being left with the seasonal to slightly warmer than average weather this week toward the weekend there will be a little bit of troughing in the jet stream over the uh, uh, Northern Rockies Pacific Northwest that will likely bring a couple of rounds of thunderstorms into the northern plains. I don't expect to see widespread heavy rain unless uh, one complex of storms really gets going. Hot weather generally dry except for some showery weather down along the Gulf Coast in Florida uh, will persist in the south and really most of the Midwest will be just slightly warmer than average. As far as precipitation goes, heading into Memorial Day weekend, the week coming up, a few scattered areas of showers, the thunder showers, maybe some thunderstorms from central Canada down into Texas. For the most part, I would not describe this as wetter than average, just a chance for some rain. And it, showers will be fairly limited in the eastern United States. And frankly, most of the West looks like it will be dry this last full week of May. And as the calendar turns to June, not a lot of change. I think the Gulf will start heating up and you'll get some uh, Gulf of Mexico uh, showers and thunderstorms from the sea breeze front and the central and northern plains still a little showery at times. Since the inception of Vatterstadt, the spirit of innovation has led the company. We push the limits, providing innovative and reliable seating and tillage solutions that simplify everyday life for farmers. We continue to reimagine the capabilities and technology behind farm machinery, providing customers with a perfect emergence while maximizing their yields. We look forward to growing together. Getting down to business on the farm means hitting the office early, making sure your team's ready to go, getting updates from the field, and talking with your management team. At Brimmer Bank, we understand the business of farming and how to protect and grow your operation so you can be sure you're present and your future are in good hands. Get a jump on next season's crop. Before you put your planter away after the planting season, bring it to the experts at Titan Machinery for a full inspection. 
Type Machinery service technicians have the experience and training to inspect your Case IH planter and get it in optimal condition for next season. Get a head start on next season and get the peace of mind that your planter is ready when you store it for the winter. Contact the planter experts at your local Type Machinery Case IH dealership today. I'm Peter Bosch. I've been working with Gateway Building Systems for a little over 20 years now. I chose Gateway Building Systems to build my shop because I wanted a building that could both be used for my equipment and as a place for my family to hang out and do things. I would advise anybody that's thinking about working with Gateway to go in and talk to the guys there, tell them your plans and your future dreams and let them design something for you. Built in North Dakota and delivered across the Midwest, every pinky home is a custom home, designed for your family, built by ours. And with our on-site lumberyard and generations of experience, we can help build the home of your dreams without breaking your budget. Build something that lasts. Build with Pinky Homes. Get to know us and see all of your customization options at pinkyhomes.com. Produce that will feed around 100 families this summer is going into the ground at Heike's Family Farm in Vermilion, South Dakota. The farm is a community-supported agriculture operation. Community members can buy shares in the farm and then receive produce every week throughout the growing season. A lot, a lot of new customers are finding out about us and they want to know who's growing their food and how it's being grown and they want to buy local and they want to support local which I think is more and more popular is that people want to get to know their farmer and they want to be able to have access to healthy locally grown food because around here it's hard to find. Shareholders got their first produce, fresh asparagus this month. Weather caused some delays this year so the farm is just starting to get the fields planted. Once again, Ag Week reporters will be checking in with farmers throughout the season in our Follow a Farmer series that kicks off this week with a unique operation in South Dakota. You've probably seen farmers out in their tractors planting crops this month, but one farmer's planting season looks a little different than the rest. Christy Heckathorn is getting flowers in the beds of the Flourish Flower Garden in Elk Point, South Dakota, but there's a lot that happens before the flowers see the sunshine. This year we've almost exclusively used a process called soil blocking, which is where you make your own blocks um, out of dirt. It's just a way more efficient way to start seeds. Um, takes up less space when you're growing them. Um, I can have two to three hundred plants growing on a tray, which if I use kind of the traditional method to start seeds, uh, I would only be able to have like 70 plants. They can only make a few soil blocks at a time, and they need thousands. It's a little bit more labor intensive, but the flowers grow a third faster. The flowers are making their way outside a little early this year. The weather has gotten warm. Kind of all of a sudden it just got hot <laughs> or warm. And so that, when I looked at the extended forecast, it looked like we would be pretty good for temps. So we, um, we have a decent number of seedlings planted out already. They're also adding a sunny addition to the farm. We're also going to add a sunflower, um, about a half acre of sunflowers. Getting everything ready to welcome visitors to the flowering paradise. People love flowers. They love to be in the flowers. They like to pick flowers. I think it brings up a lot of memories for people. This year, the farm will also be adding a perennial area to the garden. You can see and pick the flowers for yourself during the U-Pick events beginning in the middle of July. Up next on Ag Week TV, twin brothers share a major honor for their ag engineering business. You can get the field results you want in varying conditions with the flexibility of the Summers VRT Renegade. Featuring on-the-fly blade angle adjustment from 0 to 19 degrees. And if you want the simplicity of a Super Coulter with the ability to move a little dirt, you'll love the all-new Summers Super Coulter Samurai. Go to SummersMFG.com or visit your local dealer to learn more about North America's broadest line of tillage equipment and other products from North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing.
The team at North Star Egg is committed to quality and committed to you. We're not just a full service dealer, we're farmers too, so we know you need the best machinery and services that'll keep you going all season long. We have the largest equipment inventory in the upper Midwest with a well-equipped parts and service department. So whether you need machinery tomorrow or parts today, stop in and experience what North Star Egg can offer on our website at northstar-egg.com or give us a call at 701-361-4790. Getting down to business on the farm means hitting the office early, making sure your team's ready to go, getting updates from the field, and talking with your management team. At Brimmer Bank, we understand the business of farming and how to protect and grow your operation so you can be sure your present and your future are in good hands. Risk management is not just for the grains. Livestock producers, did you know you too can protect the price for your production? Livestock Risk Protection, or LRP for short, is a great tool to help you protect the price of your calves. Cattle producers can also protect their pasture and hayland from lack of rainfall with Pasture Rangeland Forage, or PRF insurance. This is a very affordable way to help producers in times of below average rainfall. Call the Risk Management Specialist, Martinson Ag Risk Management. find me out here. Huh. Current resident. They don't even know who I am. Fifth downtown location. Why would I care? Find a bank that cares about what you really need. Ah. Cornerstone Bank. The agriculture industry is often referred to as the backbone of North Dakota. So it seems fitting that the brains behind Red E, a Fargo-based ag engineering business, are the North Dakota 2023 Small Business People of the Year. Perfect. Matt Full started Red E in 2012. His twin brother, Jesse, joined the business in 2015. Red E is a fast-growing engineering services and manufacturing support company. They specialize in rebuilding and upgrading air seeders that farmers already own and use. The duo recently made the trek to Washington, D.C. to receive their award. And, and so we got to go into the White House, uh, be at the Rose Garden, right near there at the West Wing, and uh, the president spoke, and then we got to meet the president at the end there, and that was a real treat. The brothers say they never anticipated for their business to boom the way it has, but they are extremely thankful. We're just so grateful for uh, this opportunity that we have. Uh, the Lord who has carried us through so many things, uh, our customers, really the best customers you can have, the farmers, uh, our employees and so many others who have come alongside us and helped us get to where we are today. Reddy also held an award ceremony at their Fargo location that was open to the public earlier this month. State officials, employees and others who work on their business were in attendance. <laughs> Stories you'll only see on agweek.com and in Agweek magazine this week. We revisit Heart of Lakes meet in Minnesota to see how the COVID-19 pandemic impacted the business three years after we were there last. And after last year's windstorm, the Grand Forks County, North Dakota Soil Conservation District sees a big jump in landowners planting trees. We appreciate you watching Agri TV. Remember to check us out daily on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok to keep up on all your ag news. Have a wonderful week, everyone.